We're going to go over section 1.3 in our BJU pre-calculus textbook. This lesson is over reference angles. So our objective today is to find reference angles. And once we find them, we're going to use them to determine our trig ratios. So first, let's talk about what is a reference angle. A reference angle is the angle formed by the terminal ray and the x-axis. So you're gonna look where your terminal ray is, right? So look at your angle and look at the terminal ray, and then look at the x-axis. And that angle formed in between the terminal ray and the x-axis, that is your reference angle. So by drawing a perpendicular segment from any point on the terminal ray, to the x-axis, you will form a reference triangle. And remember, we talked about the special triangles in the last lesson. If you've got a 45-45 or a 30-60, then you know all of the trig values. So let's try an example. Let's find sine of 210 degrees. So 210 degrees, I first had to figure out what quadrant that's in. So 210 degrees, that's gonna be more than 180. It's gonna be less than 270. So it's somewhere over here in the third quadrant. So here I am, and so I'm gonna look for my reference angle. And so remember, my reference angle is formed by the terminal ray and the x-axis. So I have this little bitty piece right here. So I need to figure out what that angle is and I can draw a reference triangle right there. So if I know that this piece is 180 and the whole thing is 210, that tells me that my reference angle is going to be 210 minus 180, which is 30. So I've got a reference angle of 30, which means that I've got a special triangle. I've got a 30-60 triangle. And if you remember 30-60, the hypotenuse is two, across from 30 is one, and adjacent to 30 is the square root of square root of three. So the only difference in this problem is that the square root of three and the one are both negative. And the reason why is because of what quadrant we're in. Because if you look, this x, this x value is on the left-hand side, which means it's negative. This y value is below, which means it's negative. Okay, and our radius, our hypotenuse will always be positive. So we do have to check to our signs and make sure that our signs are accurate. Now that we have our special triangle formed, we can figure out what sine is. So sine is y over r, or opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got negative one over two. So let's try another one. Let's find sine of 300 degrees. So we know 300 is gonna be in the fourth quadrant. And so if we know the whole thing is 360, then 360 minus 300 is 60. So we've got a 60-30 triangle. So remember, the 60 is next to the 1. Across from that is the square root of 3, and our, our hypotenuse is always 2. In this case, our x value is positive, and our y value is negative. So now we just have to figure out our trig ratio. Sine is our y over our hypotenuse. So the negative square root of three over two. And if we were to put the negative square root of three over two in our calculator, and we made sure that we were in degrees, we would get negative 0 0.8660. So in your TI-83 calculator, you would have to go to mode once you're in mode, make sure that you're in degrees and not radians. And if you're in degrees, you can go back to the main screen. If you hit the sign button and 300 and enter, you should get negative 
So let's try another one. Let's find the cotangent of 225. So 225 is going to be in the third quadrant. So 225 minus 180 is 45. So we've got a 45-45 triangle, which means our legs are 1 and our hypotenuse is the square root of 2. However, since we are in the third quadrant, our x is negative and so is our y because we're in the third quadrant. So now when we find cotangent, remember cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So cotangent is, if tangent is negative 1 over negative 1, cotangent is the reciprocal of that, so it's the same thing, and we end up with negative 1 over negative 1, which is positive 1. Let's find tangent of 61 degrees, 40 minutes. So in this one, this is not a special angle. So we're actually going to have to use our TI-83 graphing calculator for this one. But we cannot just put 61.40 because that's not what it's saying. It's not saying 61.4. It's saying 61 degrees, 40 minutes. So we actually have to convert that 40 minutes into a decimal before we can put it into our calculators. So in order to make it a decimal, we have to divide it by 60 because there is 60 minutes in a degree. So 61 plus 40 divided by 60, and that is 61.67. 61 plus 40 over 60 is 61.7. So tangent of 61 degrees 40 minutes is the same as saying tangent of 61.67 and if we put that in our calculator and we make sure that we're in degree mode, we should get the answer 1.855. Next question. Let's find 81 degrees, 15 minutes. So again, this is not a special angle, which means that we have to plug it into our graphing calculator. Um, but first, we have to convert the 15 minutes to a decimal. So we're going to do 81 plus... 15 over 60, which is 0.25. So we have 81.25 is the same as 81 degrees 15 minutes. So now we'll do in our calculator cosine 81.25, and as long as we're in degrees, we should get the answer 0.1521. So let's do cosine 118 degrees. Again, not a special angle. So we have to use our calculator, and we have to make sure that they, since they gave us a degree, to make sure our mode of our calculator is in degree. If they had given you radians, so if there was a pi or if it said radians, we would have to make sure that our mode was in radians. But they gave us 118 degrees, so we have to make sure our calculator mode is in degrees. Let's do two, sine of 207. So this, again, this is not a special angle. It does not have a reference angle. So in our graphing calculator, we'll put sine of 207 degrees. Now we're going to do cosecant 60 de, 63 degrees. So 63 degrees is not a special angle. We want to use our calculator. However, you're going to notice there's not a button for cosecant. So we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if we do 1 over the sine of 63, we should get the same as cosecant of 63. Um, you can also put in your calculator sine 60 degree inverse. Um, so you have to be in degree mode, but if you'll hit sine 63 degrees inverse, and then hit enter, so these are the calculator steps, you will get your answer 126 um, so, so you have to know what the reciprocal of secant is in order to put your in your calculator. The reciprocal of secant is cosine. So in your graphing calculator, you want to put the inverse cosine of 126. So let's you how to find reference angles. If you're in the first quadrant, your reference angle is the angle that's your given. If you're in your second quadrant, your reference angle 
is 180 minus the angle that you're given. If you're in radians, you're going to do pi minus the angle that you're given. If you're in your third quadrant, you're going to take the angle that you're given and subtract 180. If you're given radians, you're going to take the radians that you're given and you're going to subtract pi to find your reference angle. If you're in the fourth quadrant, you're going to do 360 degrees minus the angle that's given. If you're in radians, you're going to do 2 pi minus the angle that you're given to find your reference angle. All right, so this is the end of this lesson. Make sure that you check to see what problems you need to complete with this video.